and we get about uh, 200 schools that we work with here at this point, making sure you don't uh, chip over any of your property. Uh, so we're wandering down into their, into their hallway here. First stop is probably going to be uh, Brian Barnett. I think I saw him come into our office here. Brian, uh, uh, here's Stuart Hansley and Todd Neaton. Hey, how are you These two are folks in our, uh, uh, in our, uh, the scopalizer. <laughs> the scopalizer. How are you? Uh, Pretty good. These folks uh, in our universal relations group. Uh, Todd works with, uh, a lot of e-science and bioinformatics projects, and Stuart is our embedded computing and robotics guy. He's got a whole bunch of cool stuff in his office. Maybe we'll start talking robots right now. Talking with the good Apparently, ones. we're talking robots right now. <laughs> Are we going to beat the uh, Sony Creo? Oh, uh, I'm not sure I can say that on tape. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Cool. Why don't we take a quick swing by Stuart's office? I can show you the cool stuff he's got sitting there. <laughs> Actually, I don't quite know how he finds his way to his desk with all the stuff that he's got in. Yeah, this is Stuart's office right here. This is pretty much uh, classic robotics guy's office. Actually, it's got less stuff in here than he usually does. He cool. must be off doing, setting up demos somewhere. But cool. Yeah, he's got a fun shop. He's got all sorts of fun things that he works with. And we'll keep on going down the hallway here. So. Uh, we have uh, initiatives in university relations for both research and curriculum. So we want to we look at advancing the state of the art in research. Uh, here's Tom Healy coming up behind us. You can swing around and see Tom. This is Tom Healy. Hello. He leads in our university relations group. He uh, uh, takes care of our iCampus program at MIT. And he, uh, he looks after uh, our curriculum repository, where where uh, any uh, teaching faculty can create new curriculum uh, and, and place it up there so that other faculty anywhere in the world can pick it up and use it. He also looks after our programs in Latin America and in India. So he's a busy guy. But How are you? Very good. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, let's see what else do we have to pick on. This is Damon, admin for the University Relations team. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, Damon, make sure University Relations keeps running. He has a newborn baby son. There's a picture of him, Colby, on, 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 the, on, the, on the window here. Oh, on the outside. Where? Oh, on that side, sorry. <laughs> He's been right. out on uh, parental leave. He just got back, and we're delighted to have him back. Excellent. Oh, it looks like Revy's in. Let's go book Revy. Okay. Revy's a good person, but. Yeah. Ray. Hey. Are you here to do my annual review for me? That's right. I That's wish right. so. I win. <laughs> do I win? This is, this is Revy Sterling. Revy uh, works in the University Relations Group, and she works on um, social computing initiatives, as well as an incredibly important initiative that we have here on uh, gender equity issues, because there are not enough women in the IT industry today and in computer science and computer engineering programs in schools. And that's for a number of different reasons. And, and Revy works on a super, super important program that, that we partner with a number of uh, universities on to try to address that. You want to say a couple words about it? Sure. We partner with some great organizations, ACM, uh, CRA, Computer Research Association, uh, to work on programs to attract and retain women in computer science and computing related uh, majors. Uh, Boast that we have more women in the IT industry and thus have a greater range of perspectives when it comes to actually building and designing software and solutions, um, but also in a workforce development issue because there simply aren't enough um, women in the pipeline to, to come in and fill all the exciting jobs that are going to be happening in the IT space. Why aren't there enough women in the in the workforce? Well, a lot of women what get turned off. Uh, well, kind of a commonly known theory is that around middle school time frame, a lot of women get turned off to computing. They see it as a uh, geeky endeavor. Right. And they look at the guys in the classroom that are huddled around the computers and they're playing the shoot 'em up games. Not to say there are some women that don't like shoot 'em up games, but uh, that's really when they make the distinction between being an end user, a consumer of technology, and a creator of technology. And a lot of young women are very active consumers of technology. They've got multiple IM sessions going on. They're very comfortable with the web. There's the Girl Scouts technical merit badge. Etc. 
but they don't want to be on the on the developing end because that's really the, the where, where the geeks hang out. So there are a lot of initiatives to kind of de geekify computing and computer science. Um, a lot of women at the college age, so middle school is kind of the first crisis. Then in college, a lot of women elect to go into computer science and computer engineering because they think this is how they're going to make the world a better place. Right. Um, then they get into these classes that are full of people that don't necessarily look like them, don't necessarily act like them, have different values than them. They're stuck in two or three years of real theoretical studies and they don't see that they're doing anything to contribute. This is not the reason they went into the major. So it's not a question of the curriculum being too difficult. It's a question of unserved needs and they end up dropping out of the major as well. So um, University Relations and Microsoft Research has been very supportive of universities and professional organizations that bring project-based um, curriculum and research topics that get introduced earlier into the undergrad experience. A lot of things around service learning where we pair women and, and men, um, students with nonprofits in the community, so they're working on technical solutions from freshman year on, and they're going, wow, I can contribute, I can do something. This technology thing is really highly important. Right. So there are a lot of things that we've done to increase the pipeline and also serve the needs of those that choose this as a major. Since we have a lot of developers listening to us, is there anything specifically that individuals can do to, to help the problem or get can they invo get involved in mentoring programs in schools or other ways to um, absolutely. help, help, absolutely. help we have kids some, get through that block? Uh, there are a lot of different avenues for that. Certainly if uh, people feel affinity towards their alma mater. There's lots of opportunities, even through us, if you're recruiting, to go back and talk about just, you know, especially if these are, are female developers or even male developers, to talk about um, their experiences at Microsoft and what kind of opportunities there are for people. There is light after the tunnel of uh, the, the higher education, uh, you know, pipeline. They come in and do amazing and interesting work. Uh, we belong to, Microsoft belongs to organizations like MentorNet that pairs up uh, female and male mentors in industry with um, undergrad women and uh, in, in science and engineering and so they can really talk about pick everything from picking courses, real tactical stuff to what you actually can do with, with a, a degree in, in this field. Um, my team sponsors a lot of events like the CREW grad cohort event where we brought in every first year uh, PhD uh, CS woman and a lot of the senior women from Microsoft came and participated in this cohort event for three days. There's lots of opportunities to get involved. They can just email me. Cool. And, there, and there's a big event coming up in the fall. The, uh, the Grace Hoppers Conference. Grace Hoppers uh, Conference on Women in, te in Computing. Oh, wow. Is, uh, it's a huge, big event uh, put on by uh, Nita Borg Institute for Women in Technology. That's super, super important. You know, it's interesting that uh, there's been a lot of polling done of, of women in, in, com in the computing industry and in, in computer science programs, trying to understand, you know, what, why do they get in the programs, what makes them leave. And for a lot of women, it's really about impact. They get in it because they see this, as, as Ravi was saying, this is a way for them to have you know, a big impact on the world. And unfortunately, when they pull boys and find out why, why, why boys and men go into computing, a lot of times it's because they like sort of it's taking cool. apart the, they yeah. like taking apart the machine <laughs> and understanding how it works. And unfortunately, when you look at the curriculum programs that have been designed for computer science, a lot of them are really towards sort of the male side of, hey, let's pick, spend the first couple of years picking apart the machine. So a lot of what we can do to help encourage women to stay in computing, get in and stay in computing, is do more work to emphasize the impact that will happen, that, that we can do. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's easy things like, you know, in the early, the early courses, make the projects about things like creating a website for a local charity right. instead of just sort of creating some theoretical thing that has no practical use whatsoever, right? And, and a, lot of it, a lot of times it's just sort of really easy to do that sort of thing, and it has a big effect. Another thing yeah. we've been helping universities with because this is a huge issue to them. They say this is one of their top three issues. They want to see more women coming through their doors. Right. Um, and they want to understand how. So with the uh, resources and people we have over here in Microsoft Research, what we've been doing is helping schools introduce things earlier to women like human-computer interaction, uh, tenets of UI design, natural language theory, natural language processing, things that those are areas that women usually focus on when they're doing their graduate work in computer science, but those for the ones that actually make it all the way through the pipeline. So if we can help right. professors introduce these concepts in introductory courses in CS1 and CS2, we see a much greater retention of, of women 
and minorities in, um, in, in the computer sciences.